it's 2022, uh, the year is coming to an end, and the world is in conflict, inflation is growing rapidly, basically everywhere, so let me, let me ask you something, what can you, can you buy for 5 euro bucks today? You could, well, get one, or maybe two cans of fish, yeah. Or you can get like <laughs> a twentieth, uh, a twentieth uh, part of a Raspberry Pi. Because holy shit, what happened to the prices of those? Uh, or you could fulfill yourself a childhood dream and get this chunky boy for five euro bucks. Yeah, this thing is a CTV 2020s. It's a, uh, well, that's basically what happens when a radio, a TV and a cassette tape uh, player make the <laughs> Power Rangers fusion thingy. It's an all-in-one device and <laughs> with the power of a huge amount of D-cells, you can even go uh, portable with this one. I mean, <laughs> back in the days, before smartphones and stuff, we were... Uh, already uh, <laughs> screen addicted and this thing would just give you the freedom to consume media <laughs> on the road possibly in a car or even in a train and this was just uh, the absolute dream of my younger selves to to uh, own one of those and yeah I, I never got, got one but yeah, now I'm an adult and I can buy the stuff myself. So when I saw this thing on the flea market and I asked for the price, I was accept uh, <laughs> I was uh, expecting something like 120 euros or something because I know those things in a working order are quite rare by now. And if this thing is in working order, uh, the guy who sold it to me said it is in working order, but yeah, it's a Berlin flea market, so trust nobody but for five bucks there's literally nothing you can do wrong when buying such a device even if it doesn't work for five euros it's still a nice device which I could try to repair if it doesn't work so today we are gonna open up my childhood dream try if it works and if it works we maybe build a small cyber deck out of it because even if the tube here in it would work. There is sadly no analog uh, TV here in uh, Germany anymore. So even if the TV works, we won't have a picture. So I'm planning on taking that little Raspberry Pi here, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, <laughs> even those inflated in price of massively. Um, and put it somewhere in here because <laughs> I won't buy these cells to power this device and this gives us a lot of free room here to hide new electronics. And if you if you know, didn't know it, the Raspberry Pi Zero actually has an analog video out. Um, it you have to solder a little bit to to get to this, but but it works. So since this device has an analog video in. I think we could build a nice cyber deck out of it. So I guess let's see if this thing works. Uh, for that at first we need a power source. The device is tells us it takes uh, 12 to 15 volts. I assume about here. Here it's again at DC 12 volts. And it even offer, uh, offers us the possibility to char charge the batteries inside, if we had any. But since I'm, I don't want to use 12 volts, I just want to use my normal AC. We're going to use the normal AC here, which comes without any saying <laughs> how much AC. But since this is a, uh, is a, is a very old um, German device, which you can see by by this little sign, this is uh, the postal horn uh, of the all German postal service, and they used to make like calibration 
ca calibration services for devices like that and that's basically the, the seal of approval from that post how it's called uh, po <laughs> from the from the federal post service of Germany which back then also was in control of radio frequencies and stuff before they well privatized the whole thing and it didn't go very well for Germany so uh, on the other hand we see here a few likely not working knobs that that let's see if we will have problems with those So let's see if we can get this thing to work. First of all, we need a connector. In this case, again, it's something that we would call in Germany a Kaltgerätestecker or cold device uh, connector. I'm actually not really sure why this one is using that because uh, a cold device connector doesn't have like earth and so I assume it's because this has a completely uh, plastic enclosure that's why they don't need an earth but yeah I would be more comfortable if this thing would have an earth I guess let's plug this thing in and just find out So it's plugged in. Uh, down here we have a few buttons. Basically this one is an on-off switch and then we have here the functionality to choose be between TV, tape and radio. Then we have a volume button and we can choose between different frequencies for the TV and for the radio I think. So <laughs> let's just hope this thing doesn't explode and try radio first. Oh! That doesn't sound as bad. Let, let me get the antenna out. Nice! Okay. Let me turn this, the volume a little bit down. We see it's, it's working but the right speaker seems to be a bit shaky cutting in and out i assume uh, assume a slight contact loss on this side maybe <laughs> yeah but uh, I, i'm basically very happy that i'm even hearing something so let me try finding uh, another radio channel Yeah. Yeah. I better should stop playing uh, music or get copyright striked. <laughs> so um, we see radio basically works. Now let me try tape. Uh, so at first we're gonna check. Yeah, sadly we don't have a tape in there. And I don't even have tapes here at home, so yeah, we just assume we have a tape in there. <laughs> and we can do the place. I hope you can hear it, but there is the classical noise of the tape motor. So it seems to work. And if I look inside here, you maybe see it too, there it's spinning. So I just assume playing tapes would also work. I can confirm that later when I, when I got a tape. So now is the big question. Does the tube work? TV. Ah, maybe I have to, oh, that's the radio again. I have to stop the cassette tape first, I think. So let's let's try TV. I hear the classical high-pitched sound of a TV tube starting up. 
I guess that's the, the flyback transformator making that noise. Yeah, but besides... Oh, no, I, I think. Yeah, you can't see it because of the light, but the tube is actually making a white display right now. Let me check something. Back here we have a setting. Ah, I'm in monitoring function. Oh, okay. We were in monitoring function, but now we're in analog TV. So the display seems to work, which is very good. <laughs> Uh, for, for five bucks you can't do anything wrong and if, if the dif display works and looks like it uh, we, we can actually make something out of this so we won't find TV even if I try to tune it to something because as I already said there is nothing on the frequencies in Germany of analog TV anymore at least nothing you can see with a device like this the uh, frequencies got redistributed to, I think, cell phone towers and other stuff. But there is no TV going on there anymore. We can different, see different, time, time, uh, different kinds of interference patterns, but nothing more. So, I think we can turn that off again. I'm very happy. On first inspection, this device seems to work. Um, <laughs> That, that's cool, for, for five bucks, that's the best purchase I basically ever made. And the next step will be to take a look inside. Uh, now that I know that this device is actually working, um, yeah, I still want to take a look inside. But for this, we have to disconnect it from the power source, um, turn it on again and drain it a while, because there's a vacuum tube in there with a high voltage power supply and that's something you have to be very careful about because the power supply in this thing can probably kill me so that's because so i i will be making very sure that the capacitors in there are not charged when i'm opening this up so see you again in a little bit of time <clears throat> so, I'm back. The device should be completely discharged by now. And let's take some screws out. Maybe. As far as I could see, opening this thing up should be a matter of a few small screws. Nothing fancy here. I think there aren't even screws inside the cover. It's all very old school. This is just a shell you can take off. So, now we should be able to carefully lift it off. Yeah, like that. And first blood. We see the structural integrity of this material after all these years isn't perfect. There we have a little piece broken off up here, but that's nothing that super glue can't fix. I'm not sure, I think there's still something snagging inside. Ah, yeah. Like that. Oh, is it an opening up top? No, it's not an opening up top. That didn't sound as good. But it's open. 
reset that. Now careful with the wiring inside. Let me turn it a bit. That looks good. And if I'm not mistaken, then some, I'm not the first person that opened this up. Because right over here, those wire connections with the tape around them, I dope, that's original. But let us have a look what's inside here. At first we can see the danger device, the big tube here. And I actually, I, I use this, this pointy thing here to, to or better, this pointy thing to, to show because I don't want to touch anything near this whole thing here. Yeah. So let's see. We have the tube, we have the uh, driver, the flyback transformator. This is the thing that makes the whole, the high pitched noise. Over here, what is this? Ah, yeah. This over here is the motor for the cassette deck. Um, what else do we have here? I think those wires, they go there. Hmm. This over here is the main input, a bridge rectifier and capacitors. There's a lot of grease on those, but they still look okay. Uh -huh. Over here is a small spider web. That happens, I assume. Yeah. Just get me get a glimpse of what's in here. I think that behind here, that must be the antenna. It's a ferrite core with uh, with a thin coil around it. I, I doubt it's a transformator that could be an, an antenna over there. Oh, and when we see here, this tube is actually made by Samsung. And... <laughs> yeah, it, it even has a sticker about the X-ray warning on there and a serial number. Yeah, the, the, the device is pretty dusty down here. Uh, down here we can see a bit of the banked up uh, potentiometers. This one is uh, the, the front just broke off, or as we say, the front fell off. I'm I'm not quite sure what this is. It looks like it has an extra shielding. Interesting. Still searching for more information here. To be fair, the device actually is real fucking dusty. I can feel it tingle in my nose. Ah, we overlooked something here. That's uh, the transformator to get down to, I assume, what is this, 12 volts. Yeah, it goes into the, we have the main input, goes into the bridge rectifier. Uh, no, no. I think it goes in the tra transformator first, then it goes in the bridge rectifier. And then it fills the input capacitors there. I will try to get some, some macro shots.
space junk is one of those problems that the future generations will hate us for. We are littering the outer atmosphere with a staggering amount of debris. Everything that humanity has ever launched into orbit will be trapped there for thousands, if not millions of years. So my idea is, see those red wires? Those are the mains AC input and I want to steal some of those inputs. So I'm gonna um, cut these wires and get my mains voltage from there and then we will go over there. Those two, yeah, those two. Uh, those are the audio and video input and we will also solder wires to them. So, after some soldering we have uh, our mains voltage over here. You can see the blue tape there. And back there the shiny new soldering. That's the audio and video input. And they go into those holes over there, into the battery compartment. Same goes for the for the wires of the mains voltage. So welcome back. As you can see, we are by now in the trunk or the battery department, uh, battery containment. In in the place where the huge D-cells used to go. Um, because <laughs> I don't even know uh, if, if you can still buy D-cells. Yeah, you can probably, but nobody is uh, <laughs> uh, putting D-cells on stuff anymore. But that don't matter. As you can see, I put some isolation tape on the parts where the batteries used to connect. And I have my wires here, my video wire, my audio wire, and my mains wire. And the next thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna straight out take a, <laughs> a USB charger, 5 volts. Not the prettiest model, but it will do. We take it, and we're gonna just straight out soldering it to the to the mains because who cares so give me a second until the soldering iron is hot and then That worked. That's on there. So, that's basically our new power supply. Now we're gonna wrap it to isolate the whole thing and then we can place it in there. But first, let me get out that, that blob of solder down there that we actually <laughs> accidentally dropped. Uh, it doesn't want to come out now. Come on. It actually burned right in there. Beautiful. You know what? At this point, I don't even give a fuck anymore. Let's just... Let's just put a nice piece of blue tape over there and pretend there's nothing under it. Problem solved. Looks a little bit like jeans. 
But yeah, that's that's basically it. Now we can take our device, put it down in here, and stop giving a fuck. Basically, we will then take a USB cord, can plug it in there. Yeah, right there looks good. And then we can clump our Raspberry Pi on there. I hope heat management is okay with this. Uh, we're gonna remove those so we have a little bit more of space. Little awesome air here. Not not the most beautiful under it. So next thing will be taking our little raspberry, placing it inside, and connecting all the stuff. So <clears throat> we got a raspberry in here. And if we look on the other underside, we can see we have two connections, one to the video output of the Raspberry Pi Zero because it has a hidden composite video output that you can just solder on here. And over here I have a ground and a GPIO pin 13. And this, uh, with this one we can drive a, a signal that will give us some audio functionality. Uh, it won't sound good but we can add a filter later and maybe make it sound a little bit better. So I just jam that here back in. Something like that. Yeah, that looks okay. Then we're gonna close up the whole thing and see if it starts. Yeah, that's basically our boot up screen. Nice. And there we have it. And now the thing we were waiting for. Ah, I think I had a keyboard problem. <laughs> the terminal size and everything isn't isn't right, but we get there. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was looking for. <laughs> let let me turn on the lights. This this is just beautiful. The the way it looks on a on a cathode ray tube is just different than when you look see this on a on a digital screen. I mean, sure. This has been a digital picture once, but it's sent out over composite and gets drawn by the tube, so it gives you that that special feeling that you have with uh, tube displays. And I'm happy that it works. Now I have to try to test the audio functionality. Let me see how I can do that. So I'm back. Uh, it took me a while, actually quite some time to get the audio running on this and that's because uh, the most uh, terminal music players I found didn't support a resolution of the terminal as low as this but the VLC uh, media player with the NCURSES interface for the terminal actually works and I can demonstrate that. There it is. We can also patience of the angels not me. My heart will I yearn for vengeance. Yeah, as you can see, um, music works. The quality is basically as you would expect from such an old device that was never made to 
uh, play high quality audio in the first place. But one thing that surprised me is um, I didn't use a filter. I just soldered the, the audio input straight to the GPIO pin. And even without filter it works surprisingly well. Um, so I guess you don't actually need a filter. You can just uh, make your AUX build out one when, you, when your loudspeaker is crappy enough. So basically the whole thing uh, took quite a while since I'm not working with the uh, most up-to-date version of Raspberry N. Um, but I guess this, I will change that in the future and then on this device also streaming music from YouTube should work fine. But for now that's basically it and I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Ah, für mich? Ah, ungeil. Ähm, ich mache gerade eigentlich noch Aufnahme.